All right, here we go. The last time we jump into the sensorium, probably, because we just have the like dev room stuff left to go. Oh, we don't start in the dev room. Oh, we start right outside the dev room. That's fine. Yeah, we just have the like dev room stuff to go through. Quite a bit of reading, a few puzzles that may or may not be punishment. We'll see. And then like two achievements. So we'll see how long this all takes. And I did solve all these, right? Are they like... Did they reset? Oh. So I should like solve them again? I mean, I, I, I guess. Oh god, wait. this one like really no that was the fast one this one was like long oh right yeah and then this one Oh god, what was it again? Just that, okay. There we go. Caught up with that. Now, let's move on to this one. Sight area. Sight always felt like an area that would be easy to design, since sight is one of the two senses you can actually use playing games. No, I would argue there's three senses. You use sight, you use hearing, and you use touch. Like, you can't play a game without touch. Even though you don't literally feel things in the game, it's like through touch and your character touching things and interacting with things and you interacting with the keyboard and the interface. That is how you play a video game. So I would say this should be three, personally. But it took me a while to actually come up with, with puzzles I was happy with. Like I said, this area was originally going to involve translation. You didn't say that. Huh? L like you said. Like you said where? It was awful. Translating symbols involved sight? I see. Okay. You did say that. Just didn't remember from a week ago. But I felt like the sense of sight wasn't really at the forefront in that case. Yeah, that's more memory, so I came up with some other ideas involving paying attention to your environment. One idea I had involved the puzzle in the room to the right. It was one of the first sight puzzles I prototyped, but I ended up not being happy with it because of how finicky and arbitrary it was. Another idea involved filling up the walls of a room with hundreds of differently colored buttons. The puzzle was going to involve finding the button that matched the color of the wire leading out of the room. But that was terrible for obvious reasons, so I left that out of the game. Also, the, the logic puzzle with the white gates used to just be a drawing on the wall instead of an actual circuit. Logic puzzle with the white gates? Don't remember which one, this. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess there was this puzzle that like spanned three walls or something. Uh. So, what was this supposed to be? And... What are we doing here? Because, yeah, you could have done more stuff with, like, perspective. Right? That's it, okay. I mean, puzzles like this would have been pretty cool. But, I, I guess... I do agree that it's a little arbitrary, just like, out of all of these, why is it specifically right here? I mean, it's a good viewpoint, but it's just like, going in here, or whatever, in the corner, but still like, finding somewhere, like, a perspective to make something, that's always a good way to implement sight into games, in that sense, like, perspective and whatever. 
You just have to find a yellow button? No? Yeah, it's like the one that matched the wire, but... Uh, is this something you can solve? I don't even know if this has a solution. That point actually looks slightly wrong. This one? Yeah, the top right block isn't like completely, I mean, these aren't completely right either. You can see a couple pixels here, like, yeah, it's not, it's not flawless, but I feel like it's good enough. And this is the only one that actually, like, completely lines up with the, uh, the wall there. But yeah, I don't know if this is anything we can do anything with. The wire on the floor lights up when it's solved? Oh. Okay, it was just that. It just didn't make, like, a uh, you've done it sound like the other ones. Like that. And then smell. The smell puzzle was another weird one to design. The current iteration was inspired by the fact that the sense of smell is so heavily tied to memory and nostalgia. But originally, this was going to be the meta puzzle of Gold Valley. It was going to have a smell slider in the options that defaulted to zero, and you could reveal the hidden fourth temple puzzle, temple's puzzle solution by turning it up to 100%. I still think that puzzle maybe could have been cool if I'd pulled it off correctly, but I just ended up liking the memory-based puzzles more. Also, don't worry, there isn't a hidden options menu puzzle anymore, so don't go looking for one. Or is there? Here's a map of the smell area solution I made a while back. As you can see by the orange, orange path, the maze used to have an alternate path that would unlock a secret. But don't worry, I took that out of the game too. Or did I? I see. Well, I mean, I guess we can like... Or is that too mean? I guess we could uh, just like screenshot this maybe? Like that or something? Just for later, if I have to do the like memory thing, I assume this is still the same exact path that you do take, it looks like it, as far as I remember. So I guess that could help with the, like, memorization thing. So, is there a secret fourth slider? Hmm. We do want to test out this one as well before I end it off. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any secret sliders. And yeah, as I've said, I feel like it would have been nice to have more stuff with smell, because you could do a lot more with it than just one single puzzle. Like, like they're saying, it's, it's a lot of memory and nostalgia. It would have been cool to do, like, different spins on it, where it's like, you know, a certain, certain smell maybe reminds you of, like, a color or, like, a vague blobby thing, or like, one thing might remind you of a sound, one thing might re remind you of like a place, you might get like transported into sort of like Outer wild style where you plug in the like vision stone things and you see things, like that kind of thing, where you would like be in the moments of somewhere else while you're smelling something and you would have to like pinpoint what is it that I'm smelling in this area or something like that, I don't know, like you could have done Many other types of puzzles with the smell that would have been really cool. I do like the smell puzzle. I think it's like a really good puzzle, but again, just could have been cool to have more puzzles of that sense. And then we have, what is this, uh, touch? No? What is purple again? Taste. It took me a very long time to figure out how to make a puzzle mechanic about the sense of taste. Yep, that makes sense. Since you can't really taste in video games, can you kind of taste in video games? My first idea involved the player not even completing the taste puzzles themselves. I was going to have an entire area with puzzles already completed, with some signs that someone had already been there. Scribbles on the walls, activated switches, knocked over food bowls, etc. Eventually you'd reach the end and find the skeleton of someone who tried to solve all the puzzles before you, but failed just before the finish. 
the area was going to be unconventional in that the puzzle wasn't getting through the area. It was figuring out what happened to the skeleton man, the Obra Din. And it was going to be totally optional. If you didn't feel like figuring out the story, you didn't have to. It was just there for the curious. Eventually, while coming up with that, with what the pre-solved taste puzzle would even look like, I came up with the idea of mixing ingredients and reverse engineering recipes. And I just ended up putting that in the game instead of the whole environmental storytelling thing. Well, that does sound kind of cool as well, but I mean, not really as a puzzle. Just like, that would be interesting in a... In a game, just discovering, like, an area filled with puzzles, but the puzzles are already solved. It's an interesting concept. The touch area went through the most change between conception and final implementation. When I went to prototype it, it was originally just going to have a bunch of buttons and logic gate, pu gate puzzles. The buttons also used to be pressure plates that you need to step on instead of click on. Yeah, I think you should have done that, probably. Like, instead of just block pushing, you could have had some, like wall button things, some like levers and twists and knobs and then other like pressure plates and maybe something where you could like pick up and place blocks and who knows. I eventually decided I wanted the logic gates and buttons to be a universal game mechanic in Sensorium, yeah I see, though, so I needed to think of something different. Yeah I mean that, that does make sense, like if buttons were only in the touch area, but you could have still had like the focus on buttons be in the touch area, I don't know. My second idea involved blocks that would move when you click the when you click buttons. I got pretty far with designing these and getting them into the game. You can actually find a few of these puzzles here. Try them out, see if you can light up all the wires in each puzzle. Ultimately though, this mechanic just didn't feel like touch. I ended up keeping moving blocks in the touch area, but now it requires you to click on the blocks themselves to push them, which felt a lot more true to the sense of touch. One aspect of it, but again, I feel like more things would have been cool. And yeah, this is just like a sliding puzzle, I guess. So, do we control like both of these? Yeah, at the same time, I see. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Hmm. You can't even, like, reset this one if you get something wrong. can't, like, flip these around. I need these to be shuffled, but I, I don't see how to do that. Oh, there we go. I don't know. I see. But yeah, how do we, like, start doing anything here? What? Oh, does this, like, lock it in place? I see. Okay. So... then just lock it in. I mean, that that would be kind of cool. I think this is more closely to, like, close, closely related to touch, where it's, yeah, like, a sliding puzzle, but you also have, like, some interactive elements in the puzzle itself, where you can, like, lock tiles or maybe rotate them or, like, something else just to, like, mix it up and maybe have more, like, flexible solutions than just one specific one, just so it's more about, like, Twisting and twiddling with things, touch-wise. I don't know, I feel like that would be kind of cool. And these are just nothing, and we just need them to, uh... Like, shuffle around stuff, I see. Hmm. I need one of these to be, like, in this spot, somehow.
Oh, or or not. That works too. I was gonna like get this one down here and I, I don't know, something. And here we just have to like shuffle it around and around. Well, these aren't very complicated, at least. That was like... This one was like the hardest one for me so far, but I guess there's two more. I see. a problem. How do we make it sit here? We have to, like, lock these in here, and then get this one over here. That still doesn't doesn't help. Huh? We have to, like, get this one here and then lock it, I guess? So I guess I just do this for now? Yeah, there we go. Okay, that was a little trickier. Oh boy. A little lesser doggy. Uh... Maybe lock it here or something? Yeah, getting, getting this here is the problem. It's not going to do anything. What the hell? How do you how do you do anything here? Yeah, this I, I don't understand. This doesn't seem possible. You can't, like... Oh god, wait. No. Oh god, I, I bugged it. Well, that's broken for, forever now. I think I'm, like, combining the blocks into one somehow. What even happened? Oh! I freed it! It was like inside of this block. Okay, well... Saved. Kind of, but maybe I've like now gotten it into a position that's like impossible to solve? I don't know. I, I don't understand. I don't feel like this is possible. Because you need like more than one block to be lockable. As far as I can tell, how else could we get... Oh, right, no, I'm like... One thing I have wrong is I'm assuming this one has to be in the center, but it doesn't. They're all the same block, so like... We just need one of the other ones... To go there. Okay, that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so it's actually like... Quite easy, in fact. Uh, yeah, okay, th that's super easy. I just, for some reason, assumed this one had to be the middle one. Alright. This looks a lot cooler. What's up with this lighting? I don't remember lighting like this in this game. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's it then. I think that's everything in the dev room area. So it didn't take as long as I was thinking. I thought at least it would take like another half hour to 40 minutes to complete the dev room. 
but nope. But then again, we still have like two achievements left to get, but yeah, that might not take too long. Just, you never know. If I'd like pushed on last time, maybe it would have taken longer anyway. Yeah, that was pretty pleasant. I like that dev room. It's always nice to see like, you know, sort of dev journal-ish things in games, just like explaining the thought process of stuff and what made it into the game and what didn't make it into the game. So now, do we try and do the memory thing, or do I try and do the last achievement, the other one? Uh, I guess let's try and do the other achievement, because that's like more important, I feel. This one, instructions unclear, make a cat instead of a cake. I don't remember any cake. So I'm not sure what that's gonna be about. Was cake in like the taste area or something? Also, we should check out uh, tone deaf mode. Just like go in here and just check what tone deaf does. It's in taste. All right, I'll check out taste. Yeah, that was my first thought anyway. All right, tone deaf. I see. So it's it's just like different sounds instead of pitches now. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of hard too. I guess it's not technically pitch, it's just like loudness and yeah, I mean, those were like the harder puzzles here. I feel the like soft and medium sound is very hard to distinguish. But yeah, I guess they're all mostly this. Just going to have a quick look through. Oh yeah, that's the sneaky thing, that there's like two things that require the cat solution. That's easier, at least, right? No? Oh, that powered this, I see. Dude, this is harder than using pitch! Th this is way harder, because, like, you don't have any real frame of reference for, like, which button is which sound. You just have to, like, ingrain it in your head. Whereas the pitch, you at least understand, is, like, lower, higher, higher, highest. But, I mean, sure, if you struggle with pitch, I guess, but... Yeah, I don't know. That just honestly seems like it makes the area harder to me, even if you are bad at pitch. But yeah, let's leave it off at that. Oh yeah, also, let's go to the piano thing. The piano secret and see if that has anything with tone deaf. That was not in here, right? What was this one again? This is the, like, jumping thing. Wait. Have I been here? Yeah. Okay, this is what I thought. So, this one was, like, here and then down?
Do we have to, like, wait for the piano to start, or what's happening? Or is this just impossible in tone-deaf mode? And if so, why disable it? Why not just play the piano like normal? Oh, there he goes. Yeah, okay, so it's definitely not tone deaf. Screw you if you, if you can't hear pitch very well, I guess. Alright, so now, taste area. I might have to do like a third game tonight at this rate, we'll see. Might just do some more cross code, we'll see. Alright, so where do we have cake? Fruits. It's not here. You can't make cat here. But like, that's... Make a cat instead of a cake. Are you saying, like, like an O and a Y? Oi. Nope. I thought it was going to, like, add it onto the O or something weird. It doesn't seem like we can... Also, what is the order here, anyway? If we do, like, this, will it just always be R, Y? Yeah, so it's always in left to right. It doesn't seem like we can make a cat here. Hey. So maybe it's a different puzzle? Oh, hold on. No hints, please. Until I ask. You yeah, know, this was just a math puzzle. This was like weird symbols. Yeah, nothing there. Don't think we can make a cat out of that. And that's just the smell thing. Over there, maybe? Oh, here, maybe? Cat? No. I don't think it's just the meowing. All right, well, I guess it could be here at the end. Yeah, okay, it's just here. Oh, right, because we did make cake with, like, L and F, which really doesn't make any sense. Honestly. Like, why would the F and L combine instead of, like, the K and F? Or whatever? 
Like, it's, it's kind of a neat idea, but it is very arbitrary when they were talking in the dev room about, like, killing off ideas for puzzles that felt too arbitrary, like standing in a specific corner to see a thing. If this isn't arbitrary, then what is? Car. Oh, Kaker. Kaker. And then, can we, like, do something else? Would that combine? Kakf. No, it's specifically just F and L to make cake. Alright. Cat. Yep, there you go. It's just that simple. Alright, cat complete. And now we just have the final thing. Just gotta remember, memorize the whole path of smell in like, what was it, 45 seconds? So, I mean, I guess I'll just do it over and over, just kind of grinding it out. So we have this screenshot then to go off of. Can I like open this up? No. I can't open this up like bigger in this screen. I guess if I do that. It's like as big as we can get it. 24211. Oh god, I already lost count. Yeah, I went too far. You wonder if the orange pathway exists. He did say it didn't. That it was supposed to go to a secret, but it was removed. So I doubt it. But I guess we could try that, just for the sake of it. So it is right here. Yeah, like that. And five, two, two, four, one. Nope, I did it wrong, it was four. Okay, so from here, four, like that, right? Yeah. But now, in that case, the orange wouldn't work, even if it was a thing. So hold on. I don't know, like, when it resets. If you have to redo it completely, do I have to go through here in order to, like, properly reset it? Yeah, it's reset now. Oh, almost too far. And then two, three, one, one, two. Well, I guess it's one, one, one. Yeah. Then two down, two right, three up, two right. Oh boy. Okay, let's try the the other one. So two down, two right, three up, and then left a bunch. So from here we would go seven left. Up once, and all the way to the wall, then down two, and like in here. But yeah, no secret. So then from red instead, it was down two, over here, three here, and then it was like one and one. No, two here. Two, just one? Yeah. And then four. Yeah. Oh god, I lost count. Wait, so from here... Where am I now? Am I here or am I here? 
Oh god. I guess this is the point where the red starts. This is the point where the purple starts. And then from here we go one, two, three, four. And then two, two. Over here, and then it's like four? Yeah. But yeah, this is not gonna work. But now we can try and do it without looking, I guess. That's already wrong. Good start. This one, I'm not sure I remember. I think that's right. This one, though. It's like up three or two or something? Two. Wait, that was, that was too far. this far? Shit. I did wrong right at the, the end. Pretty sure that wasn't in the time anyway. We had just one misstep there. I don't know if, like, backing off like that breaks it. I mean, now I broke it. Yeah, not a super interesting uh, achievement, this one. I did three. It was only two. Shit. So that's already wrong. Gotta practice that again. So from here, it's only two. Was it four here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Should be going up one more? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, I'm going like this way. Oh, it was at the start. What do you mean? Oh, but that was not within the time? I guess you can't stop at all, like I, I can't stop and then start counting, I just have to keep going the entire path, maybe? I don't know exactly how long that was. Ah, wait, no, that is right, Let's just keep going for now. It's really hard to keep track like when you end counting here beginning the next count is like somehow really difficult I guess it honestly might be better to like practice just everything as one sequence rather than like different colors but too late for that now
What do you mean? Okay, there we go. I was gonna say, like, there's no way that wasn't within the time. Yeah, I mean, so there we go. It's not too, too difficult. The dev room definitely helps, like, getting this visualized instead of just having to go off of my own, like, noted down numbers, like, right for, down to, and so on. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's... That's everything for a sensorium, as far as I know. I don't think I've missed anything else. So it was, like, kind of a short one, but I guess at this point, 42 minutes in, I am glad I didn't try and push on and do this last time. That would have been bad. What do you, what's your mouth doing? What is, what is happening? That's weird. Alright, I want to stand up there. But it's a very neat game. I like it a lot. It's, again, like, my main complaint with this game is just that it doesn't feel like it does enough. It feels like... There are some interesting concepts, but they aren't completely fully explored. And I mean, I guess if someone like Sigma can make a randomi randomizer for it, then that would be interesting and like hard mode and whatever. Like, it's kind of a nice basis for a game almost. But yeah, some of these areas feel like more proof of concept than actually a fully fledged out or a whatever you say, like puzzle game. So yeah, pretty good. Sensorium. That's that. I guess we'll jump into the next game, so thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, see you in some other game.